My time in school building began in 1979 when I won the first prize for the architectural scale modelling project for the youth psychiatry department of the Heckscher Clinic with Special School at the Rotmanshoi on Lake Starnberg. It continued in 1980 with the first prize for the School Centre for People with Hearing and Speech Impairment in Munich. Progressed with the first prize for the Speech Therapy School Bamberg in 1992 and peaked in 1994 with the first prize for the Gemmering Facilitation Centre with Sports Hall. Reason enough to take stock. Another reason for taking stock is the fact that in those 20 years I have survived three Ministers of Education and three regional state presidents, with the corresponding multitude of consultants, and I have learnt that the power of the Church is even greater than the power of the State. Twenty years of building for disadvantaged children and young people, twenty years of closest connection with pedagogical fates and political transformations. During the preparation for my time in school building, I came across the New Year address by our then regional state minister, Franz Josef Strauss, on the 1st of January 1979. Parts of it now are more relevant than ever, even more than 20 years ago at the beginning of my time in school building. Among other things Franz Josef Strauss said at the time, one has to realise that a misconceived building policy which goes too far in the wrong direction creates an academic proletariat, while skilled craftsmen are lacking far and wide. In this sense, the term facilitation centre, which was codified in law in 1994, in principle points to the future with a glimpse of hope for the individual types of schools, which until then had been rather inward-looking. What I personally regret is the reappearance of the term Special Facilitation Centre. In the 70s, some committed women and men campaigned for abandoning the unfortunate term special, and indeed were successful as the term gradually disappeared during the 80s. The short transition period, with the term special school, was followed by the emergence of the standardising term, still in existence, school for the hearing impaired, school for the speech impaired, school for young people with learning difficulties and so forth. It's a pleasure to point out that since about 1994, individual institutions returned to giving their offspring independent names like Martin Wiesen School in Bamberg, or Eugene Pupp's School in Gemmering. At the same time, there was a search for a generic definition, so that subject expertise could converge. In Bamberg, it's called the Centre for Learning for the Hearing and Speech Impaired. In Gemmering, merely Facilitation Centre. Just as Minister of Education Monica Hollmeyer was saying during the official opening in March 1999, all schools are facilitating schools. What I want to say is that in these 20 years spent in school building, extensive progress has been made. In the best sense, it produced communication in accordance with Mirica, as described by Albrecht Goos, Communication is not, in fact, dialogue. It is not well-articulated speech and reply. It is less and more than that. It is the earliest form belonging to the morning hour, the quiet, 
half-awake encounter with what is to come, related to music, in which the word is central, but in which the language of sound and signs also have their place. And Romana Guardini too states in his well-received lecture Culture, Creation and Peril on the occasion of the foundation of the Catholic Academy in Bavaria in 1975, Ultimately, the purpose of a cultural era lies not in humankind achieving ever-increasing prosperity and ever greater domination over nature, but in creating that kind of existence and human moral attitude which history demands at the time. So if architecture is the art that creates areas that are good for people, I have put a little bit of that into practice during my time of school building. And thus I would like to say something about the aesthetic of our architecture. To start from within when planning does not of course mean to neglect the aesthetic. It's a different aesthetic. It's an aesthetic that rather corresponds to that of old houses, where we have a feeling that they have something to say to us, show their face, have character. I started asking myself years ago why many old houses seemed livelier and radiate certain warmth. I told myself that it couldn't be because of the old houses. Today I have answers to these questions. One is that the craftsman related differently to his work, to his materials, which he touched and for which he felt respect. The materials were not only technical elements that complied with a series of regulations. And just as a meal tastes better when it's been cooked with love, why shouldn't the same be true for the building of schools? Working with one's hands means working with small irregularities, just as in the natural world. For example, things that appear symmetrical in nature are not exactly symmetrical and our eyes have developed to orientate themselves within the natural world. Thus we perceive small irregularities as naturally alive, akin to us. Our projects are by and large built with the methods of craftsmanship. The people who, through their work, have brought our houses into being had a good relationship with their work. We have searched for such people, and by chance, which never is chance, we found such people. And maybe that is why our school buildings have ended up more like dwellings similar to old houses. And, and again, Guardini gave his answer in 1957. Only by cultural symbolism can architecture show that the everyday has a meaning beyond the immediate situation and takes part in the cultural and historical continuity. I close my resume with a question asked by Guardini whether prosperity really is of the highest value in the internal structure of a political system. Modern man tends to follow this opinion but is it right? Right even when it's shown that increased prosperity can only be achieved by the apparatus of laws and administrations, of controls and constraints, which weakens personal autonomy and undermines the gravity of life responsibility? One could put forward the seemingly antisocial question whether it might not be better to have less prosperity and more self-responsibility rather than an increased standard of living and advancing incapacitation. Man has to take absolute positions, has to enable himself again to form a real opinion about matters of cultural life and to uphold them and to stand up for them and to fight them through. Wonderful colleagues in the city and in the country, in departments and offices, in building companies and families, in businesses and workshops, in engineering offices and in my own architecture firm stand up for this fight. Special thanks go to my wife, who with her love and innate wisdom 
was the safe foundation for that which was wanted for the future. My warmest thanks to you all. God bless you for your highly qualified and masterly work, for the highest degree of considerate cooperation. I embrace you all. <laughs>